Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, um, let us adore him. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 85, verses 1 to 2 and 8 through 13. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Righteousness shall 
The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. The second reading is a reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we will wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of the sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Morning. 
I don't know about any of you, but I find it shocking that Christmas is almost two weeks away. It is rapidly approaching, kind of speeding on its way. And as it approaches, we are all on this journey together in Advent, waiting for the arrival of Christ the Messiah, the light of the world coming into the world, incarnate and made manifest, made man in Christ our Lord. And this season is one of time as we light our Advent wreath, one candle per week, as we count the time down to the altar of Jesus. And last week I talked a little bit about how our liturgical calendar, how our lectionary, our readings, begins this Advent season with kind of a dire proclamation. If you can cast your mind back to our readings last week, our readings both from the Old Testament and the Gospel were very apocalyptic, weren't they? Jesus coming out of the temple and telling the disciples about how every stone will be cast down, the sun will be turned to darkness, um, the whole world will be thrown into chaos. Slightly different verbiage, but you get the idea. Things will be dramatically different. And today we begin to kind of transition out of that. Because while this Advent season, similar to Lent, is a season of penitence, which is really just more inward self reflection. It's not just about beating ourselves up for our own misdeeds or own foibles. It's not just about focusing about the parts of ourselves that we don't care for or want to change. This season is also about the comfort that we receive in the presence of God, the comfort of Christ. Think back to our first reading this morning from the book of Isaiah prophet with 60 some chapters which covers a large swath of history last week it was the proclamation warning the people to repent to turn back from their ways about the coming doom that was coming to israel from babylon but that's not where the story ends the prophet isaiah today in particular tells the people that even though they are going through such dramatic turmoil that God will be present with them, that God extends God's self out to them, that God provides comfort to them, which I think is important for us to hear, that God seeks to comfort us. This is a time of preparation, of realigning ourselves with God, of repenting and turning back to the Lord, but doing so with the assurance that God loves us, that God welcomes us into, our, into God's midst. Comfort, oh comfort, oh my people. And in the Gospel, we hear John the Baptist, who's making the way straight for the preparing of the Lord. And John the Baptist is somebody who we might not associate with this idea of comfort. As we were talking about downstairs earlier today in our um, study on the parables, John is kind of a wild, enigmatic figure. You know, it was kind of imagine a kind of street side preacher with a cardboard sign, repent for the end of the year. But that's one part of John. Because the other part of what John proclaims to the people, including us, is that those who have been downtrodden, those who have been oppressed, those low values will be lifted up. Wrongs will be made right. A bruised reed hanging by just a thread will not be broken off. A small smoldering ember, a tiny little fleck of heat and light, will not be snuffed out. The God will nourish and kindle and bring warmth and light in us as the world. Sometimes what we most need to hear and to be affirmed about, and to realize is that God also comforts us as a mother hen gathers her brood around her. Comfort can look differently for each one of us. Comfort at the end of the day might be something like a long hot soak in a tub, or a nice glass of cocoa at the end of the day. But it can also be something more profound and meaningful. Like hearing the words, I love you, 
Lord. It's okay. I'm still here with you. Whatever those words are for us that we need to hear in order to be assured of the comfort of God, I invite us to imagine God speaking those words to us. Hearing through the prophet Isaiah, comfort, O oh comfort, O oh my people. Because just like Jesus, who is born in the middle of the night when the earth is shrouded in darkness, whatever those dark parts of our own lives may be, the light of Christ shines through and out and into the world, and no darkness can ever overshadow it. So wherever we are, wherever we happen to be on this journey today, the second Sunday of Advent, we can take comfort because Christ is here with us, in us. God walks among us always. Amen. Together, let us stand and proclaim the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son who is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Trinity Anderson, the Reverend Bob Decker that they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. For Joe Biden, our president, Eric Holcomb, our governor, and Chris Jensen, our mayor. That there may be justice and peace on you. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray especially for Grant Cook, Paige Sexton, Heather Duchess, Ken Bush, Becky Seiler, Emily Baker, Mike Byers, Lydia Wente, Mark Greiner, Pat Graham, 
Gabrielle Wright, Kristen Dikema, Jamie Purvis, Leroy Ward, and Angela Nichols, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. For those serving in the military, Nam Cook, Caleb Garrett, Tommy Harris, and Ken Morrison. Thanksgiving blessing and praise be yours, God of incarnation. Because you care for us and for our prayer, may our love for you and our likeness to you be strengthened every time we pray. Amen. Together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated for a moment. Um, for a couple brief announcements before we continue on with our service. Just a reminder that Sunday mornings in Advent, nine o'clock downstairs, we are exploring the parables of Jesus. This morning we had a great and very interesting conversation about the parable of the Good Samaritan. Next week we'll be looking at the parable of the Pearl of Great Price. Um, no homework or anything is required. Um, simply show up um, and we hope that you can join us for these studies. So Sundays, 9 o'clock downstairs. This upcoming Wednesday, being the second Wednesday of the month, we have our monthly vestry meeting at 7 o'clock, also here at St. Michael's and online. Um, just a reminder, I know I say this every month, but all vestry meetings are open to every member of the congregation. Um, if you'd like to show up, you're more than welcome to do so. It's Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And on the 21st, the longest night of the year, we have our Blue Christmas service. This is a service that recognizes that the holidays are not always the bright and joyful time that it is for many others, but sometimes it can bring up very difficult or painful memories, particular, particularly for those who have lost loved ones. So it's a solemn service of grief, and it's an opportunity to come together and to grieve together. So that's the 21st at 7 o'clock. I have two other announcements, I believe. Just a reminder, ladies, that the women's group is at my house tomorrow night at six o'clock. If you haven't told me that you'll be there, just let me know so I can have an account so we'll have plenty of places set up. Thank you. This is a quick outreach reminder. The Giving Tree is out there in the narthex. We give the two Good Samaritan families. They're both located in Cicero. So if you want to take a tag, I really need them back by next Sunday. And if anyone else wants to help me deliver, I'd be happy to <laughs> connect with you. Also, I want to share real quick in regard to time, treasure and talent. Last week, it came, someone came to me and said, I have a wonderful tree that I don't need it anymore. I need to get rid of it. I emailed Family Promise and they said, we have a family just moved into a new living space. They need a tree. We were trying to decide how to get the tree. So I just wanted to share that with everyone, that even though we're small, 
it just works out perfectly like that, that someone needed a tree and we had a tree. So. Thank you to everybody who donates and makes contributions. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the most high. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you have sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I am the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Behold the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us down into the world in peace. You grant us strength and courage to love and serve you. With gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.